Hi, I'm Tanner, and this is Claridge Leather. Welcome to the shop. Today, we're gonna to be talking about saddle stitching leather. Saddle stitching is a technique where we use two needles and one thread to join some leather together by hand. It's one of those foundational skills that I think every leather crafter should at least know how to do and to do pretty well. Whether you use a sewing machine or not, it's a good skill to know. So by the end of this video, I'll show you all my secrets, everything I've learned to make the best stitch possible. But before we even touch the leather, let's go to our trusty whiteboard and talk a little bit about the theory behind the saddle stitch and exactly how it differs from a machine stitch. So I drew what hopefully you can interpret as a cross section of a piece of leather. So like if you're looking down through a piece of leather, we've cut it off right where our stitch holes go through. That's what we're looking at. So in a saddle stitch, we have one continuous thread which goes back and forth and joins the pieces of leather together. So in this case, I'm gonna use a red marker and a blue marker to represent the two ends of that same piece of thread. So if, for example, it started here, the blue one, it's gonna come in this way, like this, it's just gonna zigzag through. So it's gonna go back and forth on, on the top side and the bottom side and back and forth. And then the red is just gonna do the very same thing. So starting at this side, it's gonna come just go the opposite. So where the saddle stitch has each individual thread going from one side of the leather to the other, a machine stitch, on the other hand, has one thread staying on one side while the other thread stays on the other side and they meet in the middle and they kind of interlock with one another in the middle of the material. So this one's gonna kind of come and just dip in there like that. It never actually travels through and gets to the other side. So the, the other thread is gonna come in here, kind of tie a little knot in the middle, just keep going like that. So these are two separate threads, whereas in saddle stitching, it's just one continuous thread. So this is just a different way to show how each of the two threads pass all the way through and alternate as they go along on the saddle stitch. I'll get a little bit more into the technique in a minute with actual needles and thread, but. This is a pretty good way to demonstrate the theory of the saddle stitch. It's not quite as easy to show how the machine stitch would work. Basically, the bottom thread, the blue thread here, would come up from the bottom, kind of make a loop, and then there's a cool mechanism inside the sewing machine that will then catch the top thread and pull it back, and it's gonna make a knot ideally in the middle of your material between the two layers. So it's gonna come up and back down. That's a little bit more like a machine stitch. So one nice thing about hand stitching leather is you really don't need very many tools at all. And the tools that you do need can be bought pretty inexpensively. So I'll put a link in the description below of some of the more basic tools that I used initially for a few years, like some stitching irons I got from Amazon that were less than 20 bucks for a complete set. And they worked pretty well for, for quite a while before I upgraded. So you need some stitching irons or pricking irons. You might find different names um, and they might have different characteristics too. We can get into those uh, details maybe in another video. But basically these just punch the holes in your leather or mark the holes in your leather. Um, you'll need something to tap on this pricking iron with. Um, this is a, a maul, a Berry King maul. You can use a rawhide mallet or a plastic mallet, but you don't want a metal hammer. You're going to need some thread. I like to use, this is uh, some polyester thread, braided polyester. This is a 0.55 millimeter thread. It works well for the things I like to make. And you need some needles. So these are John James harness needles. These are really inexpensive. Um, come in a pack of 25 and they seem to last just about forever. Um, they rarely break or bend or anything like that. So they're just these nice little needles. They don't have a sharp point. It's kind of rounded so that um, because the, the poking is done with your uh, irons or your awl, um, not, not the needle itself. This is a stitching clamp. It's a nice thing to have. This one is particularly nice just because it's easily, easily positionable. Um, it just gives you a third hand so that it can hold on to whatever you're stitching so you don't have to hold it on your lap. 
Uh, this is the first one that I made when I got going. It worked pretty well. It's uh, nothing fancy. It had a lot of a lot of uh, imperfections in, in terms of the function, but it got me by for quite a while. So if you want to get crafty and make your own, that's perfectly doable. But I do think it's kind of a handy thing to have. So now I'm going to use my stitching iron right in this uh, line that I've marked along the edge here. I'll do my best to line those teeth up, splitting the difference on that line. And like we said, this is going to go all the way through. You can see how those teeth are coming through on the other side. We'll lift that up. We'll just catch and catch that last hole to make another another few holes here. So you've probably noticed that these are slanted stitch holes. Every teeth on this stitching iron is slanted up at a diagonal angle. So that will help to give us a nice diagonal look to the stitches. That's definitely not... Um, a functional thing it's totally aesthetic but I think it adds a really nice uh, classy look to the piece so that's why I chose these particular irons you can also find some that are just straight holes just round holes all in a row um, you can find some that are just like a straight line like a dotted line where the slots are not slanted they're just kind of straight so that'll just give your stitch a little bit different look but for the kind of stitching I do I like to use these slanted irons well, I think we're about ready to stitch some leather so the first thing we have to do is to determine how long our thread should be. So I like to use about five times the length of the stitch line on the workpiece. Five times usually gives me a pretty safe place to start. Sometimes I find out I have a little bit extra at the end, which is just fine. You don't want to come up short. If you have a really thick piece of leather, you might need a little bit more thread than that. But I think let's start with five times on this one. So once more, I'll give a little disclaimer that this is the way I do it. This is the way I've found that it works really well for me. There are some other people on the internet who do it other ways and it works really well and they do beautiful work. So I just wanna show you how I do it because it works well for me. So we've got our thread measured out. We're gonna put our needles on either end of the thread. So like we mentioned at the very beginning, saddle stitching is done with one thread and two needles. So now I'll show you how to put the needle onto the thread so it's well secured on each end of this thread. So like I mentioned, this is a braided polyester thread, and it makes this part a little bit easier uh, than if you were to use something like a linen thread. So the first thing I'll need to do is put this through the eye of the needle, which is sometimes easier said than done. And then I actually pierce in between the braids in the thread, pierce that with this needle. You can see it's actually gone right through the middle of the braids. And then I just pull that knot right over the end of the needle and up toward it. And then that's on there securely. So I'll show that one more time with a different thread. This is Ritza Tiger Thread. It's a waxed braided polyester thread. Uh, I like to use that sometimes as well. So it's a thread that kind of lays flat instead of that more round thread like the twist thread. So got it through the eye of the needle. We'll pull it through a couple inches and we'll pierce in between the braids. Okay, see it's pierced in the middle there. And then we're gonna bring the tail here back down and just pull it over the end of the needle over the head of the needle and then just give it a little tug and uh, I don't always like to pull this straight up to the eye of the needle sometimes it's good just to leave a little slack there that probably helps it go through the stitch hole a little more easily so there are different ways to do this again this is the way I like to do it though I'll try to show this from several angles but to get started just need to get our thread through the first hole here and I'm going to pull this through so that I have even lengths of thread on both sides of the hole. So I've got one needle on each side here. And the, the stitch holes are slanted toward me. So the, the top edge of the hole is up and away, and they come down toward me. And that's the way I usually like to stitch. And that all comes again from those slanted uh, pricking irons that I use. So the next thing I want to do is put my right needle through just to open up the, the hole on the left side. And I'll take my left needle poke it through that hole. So then take my right needle and put it behind this needle that just came through and that makes a little T. I'm going to pinch it with my thumb. I'm not going to pull it through all the way, just about this far. So I'm going to pull this thread down 
and toward me to the front and lower corner of that slot. Take this needle that's in the back now and poke it through the upper part of that slot that's away from me. And I'll take this thread and just go over the top and pull it through. A little bit of tension. I'll show you that again here and then I'll show it to, to you from a different angle. So that goes through just to open up that hole. This comes through from the left side. This makes a T and I'll pinch it with my thumb. Pulls it through a little bit. And I'll use these fingers to kind of tension this down toward me. This goes through the upper and further away part of that slot. This thread goes over the top. And a little bit of tension. Here's a little bit different angle. We'll open that hole up, come through from the left side, make our T and pinch it. Come through just a little ways here and we'll use these fingers to tension this, pulling it down to that bottom part of that slot and this goes in the upper corner away from me. Again we'll just lay this over on the on the other side and bring it through. Just a little bit of tension here. So one thing you'll see me do is to bring my right arm and pull that thread down into my right while the left thread goes up into my left toward the ceiling. So that helps to orient these threads uh, and help establish that nice slanted stitch that we're looking for. I'll show you from the side in a minute how that works, but so my right arm is going to go down to the right, left goes up to the left. So that's looking pretty good. Looks like we got a nice angled stitch on the front side as well as on the back side. So I'd really struggled with that before. Um, if you've struggled with that too, I hope this method helps you to get that nice consistent look on both sides. You almost can't tell which side is the better side, which I uh, ha had some trouble with that before. So now, now that we've uh, finished up, let's say that we got to the end of our stitch line. I'll show you how to stitch back a couple stitches so that that locks it in and is secure and will never come undone. So before we go any further and before I show you how to back stitch, I just have to say that I noticed this stitch too and it's driving me crazy. So uh, you can see how one bad stitch can kind of mess up a whole stitch line. So if it were a, a wallet or something like that I was making, I would stop and I'd go back and I'd fix that one. That just makes me, uh, makes me cringe and it probably makes you cringe too now that you see it. So um, anyway, pay attention to each and every stitch. The more consistent you can be, the nicer work piece you're going to have. So if, when we want to back stitch now, I'm going to kind of start my, I'm going to uh, open up this hole again. See, you can see I'm going to go right underneath this last stitch here and then I'm going to come up from the bottom on the back side, pull that through and again I'm going to pull this down toward me and this time put this thread up just above that and bring it through the back side. And we're not going to do that little loop over it this time. You can see how it made these look, kind of go nice and parallel next to each other. Once again, I'm going to go kind of underneath this, up from the bottom side here, pull this down toward me, and this one's going to go up through that like here. Again, nice and parallel. We can go two or three. Um, I usually go two, some people like to go three, so we'll go three here. And then we're done. This is where some people can go a different route, uh, cutting these and adding glue. I personally don't like to add glue. I just like to take this and put it through so that I have both my ends on one side, like if there's a side that of the workpiece that's not going to be seen as much. Um, and I'll snip these on the back side, which I'll show you in a minute. And I like to just burn them. It's uh, maybe not as clean as the way that some people do it with glue, but I think it works pretty well. So here's how that back stitch is looking. Not too shabby. Here's on the back side. 
So I like to just snip these, leave just a little bit, maybe a sixteenth of an inch here. About that much. And I just burn it with a lighter. And you'll, this is a uh, polyester thread, so it kind of melts down. Just two little beads. And then just touch them. And to me, that's a pretty acceptable finish. Um, so I like that. Okay, that's it. That's about everything I know about saddle stitching. Thank you so much for watching again. I really appreciate your support. Uh, I hope this was valuable for you. If so, subscribe. I got a lot more content coming down the road that I'm pretty excited about. And as always, if there's something you want to specifically learn, let me know and I'll really try to incorporate that into future videos. So thanks for joining me. I hope this was helpful for you. I'll talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.